Hello and welcome to this short little video on how to get a signature plot for your tests. Now recall that a signature plot illustrates the efficacy of a metal, medical test, or it allows you to comp compare two or more medical tests to see which is the best. It graphs the probability of the person having the disease given they tested positive against the probability of a randomly selected person having the disease. And it does it for many, many, many values of P of D, and it's on the order of a thousand. Now, if you recall back to the multiple sclerosis uh, example, it took us quite some time to calculate the probability of D given positive, and that was just for one value of probability of D. Now, imagine spending that time doing it a thousand times, and you realize that computers are actually kind of cool because it allows us to get through this rather quickly. Nice thing is R has a function that can perform it. It makes creating the signature plots relatively easy. And that function is called Bayes.law. By now you know lowercase, uppercase, they're completely different according to R. So make sure that those are all lowercase and the dot is in the right place. Now just as we needed some information to do the calculations, R also needs that information. So we need to give R the disease prevalence and either the confusion matrix or the sensitivity and specificity. Usually we will have the sensitivity and specificity available and not the confusion matrix. doesn't matter. You either have to give the confusion matrix or the sensitivity and specificity. And what it does is it returns the probability of D given positive, the probability that a person has the disease given they tested positive, you know, and a lot of other information. So here's the overview of the steps for creating a signature plot. There's three basic steps. One, select your many, many, many values of P of D. Two, calculate the probability of D given positive for each of those values. And three, plot P of D given positive against P of D. So let's see what that looks like in R. So I just opened up R. I'm going to start a new script. And I'm going to arrange the windows. I'm going to type in some comments at the head, just so I know what the script is all about. I need to start a preamble, because I need to source a specific function. And actually, I'm not going to source this specific function. I'm going to source an entire suite of functions. And actually, this one line is going to take care of all those sourcings that you've had to do in the past. It starts out, as you would expect, http colon slash slash rfs.kavasaheim.com. And then type in stat 4013.r. If you're in the 4053 course, you could type in stat 4053.r. You'd get the same suite of functions. And let's run it. Control R. Look over here on the left in the console window, and you've got a lot of functions now loaded. You've got the Forsberg test, the Hildebrand rule. We remember the Hildebrand rule. It's used to determine if a uh, if the data are, quote, too skewed. Um, Shapiro test, Z test, medium test, those will be used in the future. Bayes law is what we're going to use now. Modal function, we know, we've know we seen that before. That was back in lab two. Uh, the means function gives us the ability to calculate several types of means, not just the arithmetic mean, but also the geometric and the harmonic. Uh, normal overlay, histogram, hist to B to B. Another norm overlay, CV. Um, actually, up through norm overlay, those are some helpful graphics. Um, CV is um, and skew and kurtosis are some sample um, statistics that we can now measure. Uh, two libraries are being loaded, car and mass. If you get errors on this, don't worry about it at this point. Uh, I mean, if you get errors on the libraries loading, if you get something that says library not found, don't worry about it at this point. We'll deal with that in the future. And when I say don't worry, I, I really do mean don't worry about it. We're not going to use any of the functions in car or mass. OK, so let's look at an example usage. Function is Bayes law dot law. 
it needs to know the disease prevalence. So the 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 parameter is p wild, and that stands for the disease prevalence or the probability in the wild of having the disease. And we know that that for the multiple sclerosis example, that was 49 out of 100,000. Uh, we have to specify the sensitivity. And from the Sparrow test, if we recall, the sensitivity was 0 0.99. And the specificity was 0 0.95. We needed that information for ourselves to calculate the probability of the disease given positive. R needs the same information. So hit Control R, and let's see what it spits back at us. Uh, we got the title of this, it's the Bayes' Law Calculator. It tells us the sensitivity and specificity, just so that we can double check. It also gives us the false positive rate and the false negative rate, again, so that we can double check that we got the numbers in there correctly. The disease prevalence, that's p-wild, again, so that we can double check that we got the numbers in there correctly. And then probability of disease, and this is the probability of disease given a positive test. 0.00961344 which is what we got last time, if you recall. That's awesome. All that to get just one number. Now notice we didn't get just one number. We got a lot of numbers that we don't really need. Because recall that the signature plot requires us just to calculate the probability of D given positive. Here we got the probability of D given positive and probability of D, and false negative rate, and false positive rate, and specificity, and sensitivity, and a title. So if all we need is this probability of disease given positive, then we can stick that at the end of our Bayes' Law line. And let's get some more room in here. And notice that's a dollar sign prob diseased. Dollar sign prob diseased. The P and the D are both capitalized. So now if I run this line, all I get is that number, the prob disease number. Because really, that's all we need. Again, let's go back to the PowerPoint. We need to calculate just that prob diseased for each of those P of Ds. So that's how you use the base law function. Give it the probability of the disease in the wild, or the disease prevalence the sensitivity, the specificity, and you get all this information. So let's create a single signature curve now. If we recall, the first step was to select several values of P of D. Okay, Several values, they're going to range from 0 to 1, by the way, because disease prevalence is a probability, and probabilities have to be between 0 and 1 inclusive. Now, the fastest way of doing this is just to use the SEQ function. SEQ stands for sequence. It takes the minimum value in the sequence, the maximum value in the sequence, and how long you want that sequence. So right now, if I hit Control-R or Command-Enter, I'm going to get 1,000 values between 0 and 1 inclusive. I'm going to do that. See, got them. 1,000 values between 0 and 1 inclusive. That doesn't do me any good because I need to store that into a, a variable. Which variable do I need to store it into? I need to store it into a variable that represents P of D. And since this is the disease prevalence, let's go ahead and call it something like disease prevalence. Since I don't type too well, I'm just going to call it disprev for disease prevalence. Control R. Notice on the left, it doesn't give us anything doesn't give us an error, more importantly, which means that now the, f the variable disprev will hold all of these numbers. OK, what was step two? Step two is to calculate p of d given plus for each of those p of d's. So let's do that. This is going to be the function Bayes' law. It takes the disease prevalence. Wait, what is the variable that holds disease prevalence? D-I-S-P-R-E-V. 
It requires sensitivity. It requires that we specify the sensitivity. It doesn't require us to be sensitive. And we know for the Sparrow test at 0 0.99. Requires that we specify the specificity. It requires that I spell it correctly. And then since all we want is that p of d given plus, just going to tack on that dollar sign and prob diseased. Hit control R. If I hit control R, this is going to give me a thousand values. One value for every disprev value we have. Boom, thousand values. Having it spit out the values isn't too helpful. We are eventually going to need to plot. So we need to save this variable, or save these values into a variable. Uh, what shall we call that variable? Let's call it sick. Control R. So now disprev holds all the p of d's. Sick holds all the p of d given positives. And remember, step three is to plot the results. Rather simple. Plot p of d given plus, which is sick, against p of d, which is disprev, which means that sick is the y variable and disprev is the x variable. So plot the x variable is disprev, y variable is sick. If I just run this, I'm going to get a lot of dots. I don't want the dots. That's lowercase l, by the way. Lowercase type equals, quote, lowercase l gives us a line. Control R to run it. And there is our signature curve. Every single test that has a sensitivity of 0.99 and a specificity of 0.95 will have that exact same signature curve. One of the more important uses of signature curves is to determine which test is better. Well, you can't determine which test is better without having at least two tests. So the first part of this was to show you how to get a single signature curve. Let's go ahead and get a double signature curve. We're going to compare the Sparrow test with the Hawk test. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to call this second test. It's got the same steps, actually. Select several values of P of D. I'm going to get those same values because and copy and paste because, well, we all know how I type. Step 2 is going to be the same. Calculate P of D plus. But it's going to be for two different tests. So this is for the Sparrow test. Instead of calling it just sick, I'm going to call it Sparrow. The Hawk test is going to be similar. Uh, except the sensitivity is going to be 0.95 and the specificity is going to be 0.99. Notice that the Sparrow is 0.99 and 0.95. The Hawk just switches those. So it would be kind of interesting to see which of those two is better. Should we put more emphasis on the specificity or on the sensitivity? And then the third step is going to just plot the results. So let's run those lines. No errors over here. Since I copied and pasted for the most part, probably not going to get errors. So now let's plot. We can only plot one at a time on a single line. We'll plot two of them on the same graph, but one at a time on a single line. So let's plot the sparrow first. The x again is going to be disprev sparrow type equals quote l. Again, that's lowercase. And then to get the second test on there, to get the hawk test on there, we'll use the lines command. It's going to look a lot like the plot command, D-I-S-P-R-E-V and hawk. And that's it. X's and Y's. 
the main difference in the lines command is it takes those x's and y points and connects them with the line with lines. Let me go ahead and run those and see what we have. Ooh, that's a problem. That's quite the problem. I don't know which of those two curves is the sparrow curve and which is the hawk curve. And the y-axis label uh, title doesn't help because it calls it sparrow and it's really kind of messy. So let's go ahead and make this lab 3 compliant. Um, to distinguish between the two we're going to have to use color perhaps. Um, so for the sparrow uh, the color is going to be I don't know what color do you want? Dodger blue. That's a good color. And the hawk is going to be saddle brown. I don't know. Let's run those two lines, see if it works. Yeah, it got colors. So it looks like the sparrow test is the worst of the two. Because the blue Dodger blue belongs to sparrow test, saddle brown belongs to the hawk. The hawk is higher. So it's a more accurate test than the sparrow test. Hmm. Still don't like that Y label. Okay, let's go ahead and make it Lab 3 compliant. Let's see where that gets us. So par family equals serif. That gives the right font. That and last equals one puts the, the all the axis values horizontal. Um, X label it's going to be disease prevalence uh, Y label is going to be probability of having the disease given a positive test that should be good enough now let's run these much better now I know what the x-axis really does represent disease prevalence I know what the y-axis represents, the probability of having the disease given a positive test for various values of disease prevalence. Now in the future we'll learn how to put a legend here so that your reader knows the difference between the brown and the blue curves, um, but we'll, uh, we'll leave that for later I think. Um, you know that the brown is the hawk and the blue is the sparrow, and the hawk being further up means it's more accurate than the Sparrow test. So I think that's it. Those are the three steps. We selected several values of P of D, calculated the probability of disease given a positive test for each of those values of P of D, and then we plotted P of D given plus against P of D. So I hope this was helpful. Take care of yourselves.